I wanted to bring this up to you because for them, you would think that, you know, if, if the Sahabi saw a woman from a mile away, he went the other way and made istighfar the whole night. No, it wasn't like that. They interacted with each other, they talked to each other, they worked with each other, they were in business partnerships. All kinds of interactions happened between men and women, but with principles. It was respectful, it was dignified. And when a companion, when, when somebody liked somebody else, you know what they did? Here's the astaghfirullah part. Here's what they did. Hey, I like you. You want to get married? And she'd say, um, maybe, talk to my dad. He said, okay. And then you go to the dad and say, hey, I, I like your daughter. And she's, I mean, I talked to her, she's not entirely opposed to the idea. Is it cool? And he says, let me talk to my daughter. How this happens today, is you go to a girl, respectfully, hey, we, we worked together for three years. Would you consider marrying me? And she's like, uh. <laughs> And maybe she says, Please don't talk to my dad, he'll kill me. Because if you talk to my dad, he'll say, This is why you go to work? This is why we sent you to uni? Like, listen, th those of you that are fathers, that have daughters, you sent your daughters to university. You brought your daughters to this country. You made them live here. You brought, you took them outside in society. You made that decision. And when somebody like a Muslim likes them, that's a good thing. How are they going to get married sitting at home? Who's going to like them? So when somebody approaches them in a respectful way, you should not say, Oh my God, the day has come. Astaghfirullah. You know, ye din bi dekhne the. Oh, toba toba. You know, what a humiliation. Now we have to go take you back into Bangladesh and hide you in a village somewhere because <laughs> some guy likes you. Astaghfirullah. You know, and there's a, you know, somebody's in Rukia on her and calm down. It's okay. You're, somebody likes your daughter, that's a good thing. Now you're going to investigate, find out. It's completely fine. The only rishta mentioned in the Quran, the only approach mentioned in the Quran is that of Musa alayhi salam in Madian. He was by himself. Musa was by himself. And these girls were by themselves working outside. And he went up to them and helped them out. And the girl said, he's kind of nice. And she, she went back to her dad and said, hire him. Which means, come on dad. <laughs> you know. And that happened. And the girl said, I like the guy. That's actually what happened in the story of Musa. Musa didn't propose, the girl proposed. And the father can't propose unless he has the approval of his daughter. So it's okay for your girls to say, Dad, there's this guy, this brother at the MSA, yeah. <laughs> he does the, he's a Thursday halakha. It's really good, you should come. Your daughter's telling you something. It's okay, go attend the halakha. It's okay, find out. Don't complicate this. There's nothing indignified about that. Don't go date a girl now. And don't take, oh, son, no mom gave a lecture, I'm going to take you out to dinner. No, no, no. Not that either, but can you have respectful interaction with someone you're interested in for marriage? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Can you take your time to understand each other's likes and dislikes? Yes, it's fine. Respectful courtship is okay. With parental guidance, with dig in, in dignified fashion, there's nothing wrong with it. So what happens is we have two extremes. We have people that are more conservative than the Sahaba. And then we have people that are more liberal than liberals. Okay, and the Islam is right in between. It's a natural way. It's a completely natural way. Okay, and so th this is something that I thought it's important to mention for families and for yourself. Talk to your daughters. Ask if they like someone. Don't create a... Between fathers and daughters, there should be open communication. They should not be terrified to tell you that they're interested in somebody. Don't force them to marry someone they don't want to. Don't force your daughters to, and, and tell them, if you don't marry this one, who's going to come and marry you? And you have to, we already said yes to them. Don't humiliate the family and say no now. Those kinds of nikahs are haram. I will say it, they're haram. You cannot emotionally and psychologically force a girl to get married under family pressure. That is batil. And that happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ considered those nikahs batil. They're, they're invalid nikahs. 
until the girl genuinely likes a guy and says, yes, I want to marry him on her own, from no pressure from her father, no pressure from her mother, no pressure from anybody else, she likes him. And even if the day of the nikah, she says, mom, I don't want to do this. The mother doesn't say, too late, girl, too late. We've got the hall, they're all, look, what are people going to, no, if the girl says, I don't want to do this, then no, stop. Allah gave her that right, you cannot take it away. You're burying them alive. This is the new way of burying women alive, by the way. Back then, they used to take the baby girl and bury her right then. Now we bury them at the day of the nikah. This is what we do. This needs to stop. Let them marry who they want. If they're a dignified Muslim. And because now you're living in a different society, you won't find someone from the same village. It's okay. You know, Musa alayhi salam is an Arab. Musa is an Arab. Or, or, or actually not an Arab. He's from Israelite. And he married an Arab. He went and married in Madian, didn't he? So many Arabs, uh, we only marry Arab. Really? Musa alayhi salam was actually from Israel. What's up with that? You know? It's all good. You, so it's, it's, it's a time now, it's a strange time that we live in. And actually the only thing that can save us is the basic principles of our deen. And getting, facilitate, making the path to marriage easy is actually one of the greatest battles against shaitan. When we make the path to marriage difficult, when you have 28, 30, 30, I'm not going to do other questions, forget it. Let's just talk about this. What am I going to do? We're going to have 35 year old boys not married. You, what do you think? They were doing tahajjud for 35 years? <laughs> what planet do you live on? They didn't do anything haram? No evil thoughts went in their head? They didn't go to university? They didn't go to work? 28, 29 year olds not being married? This is ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And we, we create standards that don't exist in our, in our religion and don't make any sense. You have three daughters, four daughters, somebody proposed for the younger daughter and no proposal came for the older daughter. No, 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 we go in order. <laughs> Who said you go in order? Which sharia? If there's a good blessing that came to your home for whichever age, why would you deny it? What will people say? What will Allah say when you explain yourself to Him and say, I deprive my daughter of a good nikah because it wasn't in order. What will you say to Allah? You tell me that. What are you going to do? Ridiculous. This nonsense needs to stop. Marriage needs to be made easy. And the guy's side, because Hindu tradition says, the guy is the gift. So the girl's side has to give him gifts. Islam came and said, the man has to give what? Mahar. The man has to give a gift. The woman is a gift to the family. And now we do in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Southeast Asia. No, no, no. We don't want jahez. We don't want gifts from the girl's side. But there should be something. At least a fridge. You know? <laughs> that, that is the opposite of what Allah commanded.